Hey everybody, it's Lisa from tocreativewebsite.com. If you have a Genesis WordPress theme, you cannot miss this video. If you don't have a Genesis WordPress theme, even though some of these tips will only be applicable to people that have the Genesis themes, you're still gonna learn a lot from this video because some of these customization tips will apply to any theme. But if you use Genesis, you definitely are going to want to watch this because I am going to talk about customizing almost every part of the site from the header to how to change what shows up here, like the admin or whomever wrote the post. If you want to remove how many comments are here, the font sizes, how did I create this cool little subscribe box in a couple of seconds, the footer, how do you change what's there? All of that is going to be covered in this video. So let's get started. Now, when you first install a Genesis theme, your theme probably looks something like this, where you have like a text title and then maybe there's something over here, maybe there isn't. One thing I like about most of the newly designed Genesis themes is that they have a header widget, which allows you to put something to the right side of your header. So this is great if you wanna put an AdSense banner or something over here, or if you just want to put some text or a search box or any kind of widget can go over here. Now, when I say newly designed themes, what I'm talking about is Studio Press. They're in the process of redesigning all of the Genesis child themes. A child theme has nothing to do with little Johnny. It's not a kid related thing at all. Child just means these are designs that are based off the parent Genesis theme. And if you see the HTML5 next to it, that means that theme has been newly updated. And I would highly recommend buying one of these if you decide to go with a Genesis theme because the ones down here that don't have the HTML5 next to it, they have not been updated yet. So the cool thing is a lot of their newly updated themes have header widgets, which allows you to edit the header area very easily. So let's say you don't want a title here you want an image or a logo to go right here well we're going to go up to the menu here and then go down to header and this is where you can upload a logo and you can see the size is 320 by 100 definitely want to make sure you stick to these size requirements now i know what a lot of you guys are thinking whoa wait a minute with my old genesis theme i could have a large image up here well guess what you can still do that here's the trick and i'm going to show you how you need to install a plugin called Simple Hooks by Genesis. And hopefully you guys know how to install a plugin. You just go to plugins, add new, then you'll do a search for Simple Hooks and then install it and activate it. And then it will show up in your Genesis menu. So let's go to Genesis Simple Hooks. And what we're looking for is we're looking for the header box. Okay, so here we are, Genesis underscore header. That's the hook we're looking for. The code that I'm going to place here is going to basically override everything in the header. So let's say you have a header image created for you and you want to replace what's in your header right now. You don't want the little text title or anything. So this is where you're going to place the code. So what code do you put in here? You just put basic HTML code for an image and you can Google this or you can just watch what I'm doing and mirror this, but you're just going to do image source equals quote and then right here this is the path to the image and I'm going to show you how to get this path in a minute but let's just say it's your domain com WP content uploads blah 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 end quote in bracket that's all you do now where do you get the path for this image so let's take a trip over to the media library this is where you upload all of your images. So let's say you have some, someone create a header for your site or you've done it yourself. You're going to upload it here. And then you're going to click on the name of the, the image. And when you come over here to the right, you're going to see something that says file URL. This is that link that I was talking about in the last screen. This is what you need to copy. So let's go back to Genesis Simple Hooks again. Okay, here we go. So let's go to image source equals quote and now we're going to paste what we just copied here so now we're going to close the quote close the brace so this is the code that you're going to need so let's save changes and let's look at our site there's our header now you're probably like okay how do we get rid of this well this is your title right so let's go to the dashboard 
and we're going to go to settings general and this is where we can get rid of the title here and save it and the banner is coming from the header widget so we're going over to header right and as you can see, this is the text widget that was calling up the banner. This is where you could normally paste like AdSense code or whatever. So we're just going to get rid of that. Now when we view the site, we've got a header and we've gotten rid of the text. See how that works? And what's really cool about this is when you resize the browser down, meaning if someone were to view your site on a phone, watch the header automatically get smaller. See how it's getting smaller? So if someone were to view your site on a smartphone, the header gets smaller, which is nice. Now let me show you something else. The cool thing about having a responsive theme, which means of course it looks great on mobile devices. When you have a theme, like I'm using the Magazine Pro theme on my natural hair website. So I've got an AdSense banner on the right and my little logo on the left. Watch what happens when I resize with the AdSense banner. Watch how it drops below the header. So if you're viewing this site on a smartphone, the menu collapses here, my logo's here, and then the banner is below there. So it looks really, really good on smaller devices. And that's what all the newly designed Genesis themes will look like on smartphones. Look how great the email subscribe form looks. So pretty cool. But I have to reiterate, if you want to make sure your theme is going to be responsive, make sure you choose the one that says HTML5 here. If not, it may not be responsive. Hopefully, they'll have all of their themes updated soon enough. Okay, now let's talk about the menus. The Genesis themes, usually most of them, will give you the option of having no menu at all, like you see right here. Or you can have one menu above or below the header. Or you can have two menus above and below. So I'm going to show you how to change that. So let's go up to our dashboard and we're going to go to the menu selection. And I've already created one menu. It's called main, but let's create another menu because I'm going to show you how to add two menus. So let's go to create new menu. And we're going to call this social media because we're going to put our social media links in this menu. Create menu and we're going to use custom links for this menu. So we're going to have, let's just say Facebook. Let's pretend this is our Facebook URL. Add to menu. And let's just do Twitter. We'll do two. Make it simple. And we're going to save this menu. So now we have two menus. We have main and social media. So the primary navigation menu, when you click manage locations up here, you have the option of assigning your menus to the different spots on your theme. So for the primary navigation, that's your top menu that goes above the header. So let's put our main menu up there. And then for our secondary menu, we're going to do our social media menu and select save changes. So now when we go to our site, you can see that we have a menu both above our site or our header and below our header. And of course, if you only want one, you just come back and get rid of the one you don't want to use by just selecting select a menu. So now we'll only have one menu. So when we go back to the site, we've only got one menu above the header. Super simple. Okay, now I want to talk about one of my favorite widgets that comes with the Genesis theme. It's called the user profile widget. And so it allows you to basically create a little about me section in the sidebar of your blog. So all you do is go to appearance widgets, and then you're going to look for a widget that says Genesis user profile and then you drag it over to your sidebar as you can see here you can add a title you choose which account or which profile for WordPress that you want to associate with this you can choose your gravatar size that's the actual picture and it automatically grabs whatever gravatar you use for your site so you don't have to upload a picture or anything as long as you have a gravatar account you're good to go you can even choose the size, small, medium, large, or extra large, the alignment, and then you can add some custom text. And then my favorite part is you can automatically sync it up with your about page. So you choose whatever page, preferably your about page, you want to use, and then you just select it. And then the read more link will automatically link to that page. So when you click read more, then it takes you to my about page. So that's a really, really nice 
widget to use if you want to personalize your site a little bit more. Now, this is my favorite part of the video. Let's talk about how I created this subscribe box with this book here. There is a plugin called Genesis E News Extended, and it's free. And it allows you to create a very modern looking subscribe form. And you can sync it up with AWeber, MailChimp, and you know some of the other popular email providers. Well, I have AWeber and this was pretty doggone easy to set up. So the first thing you're going to do is go to your dashboard and you're gonna go to plugins and you're gonna say add new and you're gonna search for eNews extended. And there it is, you see I already have it installed and then you're gonna activate it. So now when you go to appearance and widgets, you will see you have a widget called Genesis eNews Extended. Now the cool thing is I believe this plugin works for anything, not just Genesis. But if you use the Genesis themes, you have an added advantage. Let me show you. Genesis codes all of their updated themes, the ones I showed you with the HTML5 next to them. All of these themes have some styling for this subscribe box. So you see how it sort of matches the layout, like the link color matches the sign up banner here. This is done automatically with this theme. So let's just say I want to change the color of my theme. Watch what's going to happen to this subscribe box. So let's go to Genesis theme settings. And let's change this to the brown color and save settings. And let's go back to my website. Notice how the sign up form now matches my links. That's because the code for this plugin was already hard coded into this theme. That's the advantage of having the Genesis theme. Now, if you don't have Genesis, that's okay. You can still use this plugin, but you'll have to, you know, customize it more yourself to make it look like your site. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. Okay. So here we are back in our widgets. You've just installed this plugin and you see it over here in your widget area. So the first thing you're going to do is drag the plugin into your sidebar, your primary sidebar, which is what I'm using. So I'm going to just drag this. And as you can see, I already have it there, but you would just drag it and put it over there and release. So once you've dragged it over, you can now edit the code so you can customize it to work with a Weber MailChimp or whatever email program you use. So you can give it a title subscribe for your free gift is what I call mine. This is the cool part. This is that image of the book that you saw. How did I get this link? Once again, you do the same thing that I did for the header. You upload it to your media library, get the link, and just use your image code and boom, there you go. And you can even insert custom text to show after the form if you want. Then down here is where you add your AWeber or your MailChimp, whatever you use here. So for form action, this is what you use for AWeber. What I will do, you guys, is I will provide a link to what I use to help me customize this for AWeber. I'm sure there's also a, uh, an article out there that works for MailChimp as well. But as I said, I use AWeber, so that's really the only one I can speak of. You also have to add some code here. You get this from AWeber as well. And then you just hit save and you're done. And that's how I was able to get this cool looking subscribe box. I like this way better than the AWeber templates because in my opinion, the AWeber templates look a little dated because they use like the raised beveled buttons and I like the more flat design better. I think it looks a lot more modern. And unfortunately, if you have an older Studio Press theme, the ones down here, unfortunately, this plugin does not work as well in terms of the customizing with it as it does as, as it does with the newer design themes because I tried this on my to create blog, which is using one of the older design Genesis themes and the customization was a little more tricky. So again, that's why I highly recommend you get one of their newer designs. So how do you change the styling of this box? That's what I'm going to show you next. So you're going to go to the dashboard and then you're going to go to appearance editor. Now we're going to do a control F or command F for E news. And you're going to keep hitting next until you find the code for the Genesis E news extended. There it is. So all of this code here is controlling that styling that you saw on the box. Okay. So let's say you want to change the color of the border around the subscription box. 
So I'm going to scroll down to where it says border 10 pixel solid. That's the color of that border. So maybe you want it to be black. So we're going to do 000 just for the heck of it. So we're going to save this. And as you can see, the subscription box now has a black border. So that's how you change the styling for this box. And a little later on in the video, I'm going to show you how to figure out which code you're supposed to change so you're not overwhelmed by all of this. Okay, now let's come back to the post info that's up here. Now, before anyone goes nuts, if you've been using WordPress and you know anything about security, you're never supposed to use admin as your username. It's a hacker's dream. It makes it easy for people to hack into your site, but this is a local version of WordPress. This is not a real site. It's on my computer. I'm using instant WP, so it doesn't matter. So I just wanted to point that out before anybody goes crazy. But next I want to show you how to edit the post info, you know, at the top of your post where it has the date, the person who wrote it, how many comments, all that. I'm going to show you how easy it is to change this in the Genesis themes. There is a plugin and it's free. It's for Genesis only and it's called Genesis Simple Edits. So make sure you install that. So let's go to the Simple Edits page. Right here is where you control what is seen here. So let's say, for example, you only want the date to be shown. Then you can get rid of all of this, save it, go back, and as you can see, there's nothing here but the date. What's even cooler is you can come down here and click show available post info meta short codes and it will show you all the different things you can add here. Post tag. So if you want to show your categories, for example, you can just copy that and maybe you want to add category to the end. So let's just paste that there. Save settings. Now you can see uncategorized. It's showing the category of the post. So having this plugin installed really makes it easy to edit these kinds of things. And I'll talk about the footer a little bit later on in the video. Now, a common question I get about editing the Genesis themes, is how do I adjust the font size of either my posts or the widget area or the sidebar? And here's an easy way to do this, especially if you're using Chrome or Firefox, you just right click over the section you want to change. You're going to right click, and in Chrome, you're going to say inspect element. And I think it's very similar for Firefox too. And right away, it brings up this pop-up. And we're looking for something that says like font size or P for paragraph. And we're going to come over here to the right. And when you scroll, I don't see anything yet that says, you know, font size or body or anything. There we go. Body, font size. That's what we want to change. So see right now it's 1.6. Now watch what's going to happen above when I change this to 2.6. So now we know what section of the style sheet we have to change to change our font. We're looking for something in the body that says font size. Okay, so I'm just going to hit escape. So we're back in our dashboard. Let's go to appearance, editor. So I'm just going to do a control F or command F for body. And here's the body down here. There it is, font size 1.6. So this is where you would change your font size. So you can apply this tip to anything. It doesn't have to be Genesis. This is how you find what part of the style sheet you need to change. So let's do this again with the sidebar. This text right here is incredibly small. Let's say you want to make it larger. So we're going to right click, say inspect element. And we're looking for something that says like font size and it may not be at the top. You may have to scroll. So let's keep scrolling. Aha, sidebar font size is 1.4. So let's test this out. Let's see if this is what I need to change. So let's make this 2.4. And sure enough, it made it larger. So we know we're looking for something called dot sidebar and then font size is 1.4. Even though I'm changing this here on my browser, obviously I'm not changing it on the real site. This is just an overlay on my browser only. You still have to go into WordPress to make this change. This just helps you 
figure out what to change. Make sense? So back in our dashboard, we're going to go to appearance, editor, and we were looking for something that was dot sidebar, remember? So after hitting control F and returning a, a couple times, I came up on sidebars. That's what we want. Remember it was 1.4. This is where I can change it to, let's just say 2.4 and then update file. Now, when I go back and hit refresh, I've made the change on the actual site. And as you can see, the text is now large. So hopefully you can see this is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful way of figuring out what to edit on your WordPress theme. So let's do this one more time. What about this title here? We're going to right click, inspect element and entry title is what comes up. You see the first font size that's available is this 4REM. I bet that's it. Let's change it to an eight just to make sure. Yep. Notice how the text changed here. We know that's what we need to change in our style sheet. And last but not least, the footer. A lot of people want to know how in the world do I edit this? How do I get rid of it? Once again, we're going to go back to that simple edits plugin. So we're going to go to Genesis, simple edits, and we've got two spots for the footer. If this box is not checked, then it's going to use this for the footer. So if you want to wipe everything clean out of your footer, you can just get rid of all this and save. And now when we go back to the site and we view the footer, you can see it's completely blank. So if you only want, let's just say the copyright and nothing else down there, you could get rid of all of this and leave the copyright. If you want to put your own HTML code in here, you can, you can do, you know, href equals google.com if you want. I don't know why you'd want to do this, but I'm just showing you that HTML will work. So I'm going to save the settings and boom, there's a link to Google right there. So this simple edits plugin really, really, really makes it a lot easier to change things like your post info, your footer and all that. And once again, if you check this, then it's going to show this what's ever in this box right here. So it really doesn't matter. You can either use this one or this one. It's up to you. And one last thing with the footer, you also have the option of having a three column footer. So if you come to appearance widgets, then you can drag pretty much any widget into these three footer widget areas. So maybe you want a calendar in the first column and let's put a search box in the second column. Then we can say search site and then we'll put the recent post in the third column. So we can title that recent post and save. Now, now let's view the site and at the bottom you can see we have a three column footer. So that's also an option and that goes above the actual footer information. Just FYI. So guys, I hope this video has been very helpful with understanding how to edit any Genesis theme. Even though I'm using the Focus Pro theme, I hope you know this, this tip or these tips will work for virtually any Genesis theme. It's not just the one you're seeing here. And finally, make sure you familiarize yourself with the Genesis theme settings menu because every Genesis child theme has a settings area like this. So you can change the color of your theme here. You can change your layout. So if you want the column over here on the right, column here over here on the left, you can have three columns. You can have no column at all. You can decide if you want breadcrumbs on your pages where you display where the person is on the site at the top of the page. So, you know, you are here at home about us page or whatever, and then they can click back through the navigation so breadcrumbs can be helpful to keep people from getting lost you can choose so many options for your theme in this settings area alone so a lot of times when you can't figure out how to edit something it may be in the theme settings area also some genesis themes have an seo settings button this is where you can change some settings for search engine optimization i don't typically touch anything here i just use the defaults the one thing i will caution is if you have an SEO plugin like Yoast installed. If you want to use this, I would highly recommend uninstalling Yoast because the plugins don't really play well together. 
So either use one or the other. And I highly recommend just using the inherent SEO settings that come with Genesis. That's it, everyone. Hope you enjoyed. Hope editing your Genesis theme won't be so intimidating now that you've seen this video. If you have any questions, you know, feel free to drop them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. If you have a lot of questions, make sure you join my forum, websitebabble.com. If you're not on my email list, subscribe at tocreatorwebsite.com slash subscribe so you don't miss any of my juicy tips. And I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.